Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. So in today's episode, this is going to be a singular part to a much larger episode that I plan to do, which will be titled something along the lines of Things Collectors Need to Know. On this particular episode, I'm simply going to focus on how to save money when it comes to adding to your collection. So starting with my left, let's take a look at the Gears of War Storm collectible figures. Now, I already have both of these characters in my lineup. So why is it that I've purchased two of the same characters? Well, in my collector brain, Storm Collectible is releasing a version of the Wharton figure. Character I'm not particularly looking forward to own. However, that figure comes with one of the cog head scopes. I wish it came with several. So I'm thinking that, okay, if I purchase that figure, I'm certainly going to need a body to place that head on. Here are my additional bodies. Now, what I'm going to jump into as of now, and this is very important for collectors, it's knowing where to buy certain items. Pretty much all of the items that I have on this table, you can find at numerous retailers, comic shops, specialty shops, and so on. So why did I purchase these two figures, particularly from GameStop? Here is why. Let's just get this out the way first to show that this is a GameStop exclusive. So aside from that, these figures are priced cheaper at GameStop than anywhere else. GameStop has a price of $49.99 to where I think the other retailers have these figures priced at either $59.99 or $49.99. So it's anywhere between 15 to 20% cheaper at GameStop. In addition, GameStop was running a sale, 20% off each figure. So now the figures dropped down to $39.99. Now, I mentioned earlier that this was an exclusive and this one was priced more. I am not sure if GameStop simply ran out the other version and sent me this, Marcus, or if they made a mistake. But this one has a different deco than the previous. It's priced higher. However, I still got it for $39.99 with free shipping. So these aren't the only Storm Collectible figures I decided to buy from GameStop. GameStop also had the Battle Axe character with Dragon or Steed. That figure is priced at $120, if I'm not mistaken. GameStop had a, tw I think, 25% off that day. So I was able to knock off about $30 towards that figure. I don't have it here to show because it's a pre-order. It doesn't release sometime to June. Another figure that I decided, still from Storm Collectibles, still to buy at GameStop, was their Mortal Kombat version of, I think it's Sector. Whatever is the name of the Red Ninja. For the yellow and purple, I paid retail price. For this one, I did not want to pay retail price as it is essentially the same car same body, same design with different accessories. So I was able to use the GameStop. Again, I, I won't even call it a coupon. Whatever special they were running to get 20 or 25% off. So I saved about $20 on that figure. And again, I was able to get it for free shipping. So instead of paying the $80 price point that it was, I think I paid $60 for it. Even though that figure is currently out at a lot of places, GameStop had it marked as a pre-order expected to ship sometime in June. So let's take these two figures down for a second. I'm going to reach back and grab some other figures. So with these three particular figures, I also purchased them at GameStop. Usually GameStop has their Power Ranger figures priced up at $23 instead of the $20 that some other retailers have it. However, they were again running that sale for 25% off. Some of the figures were already discounted at $18. So I end up paying or spending maybe $45 for the lot. Again, with free shipping. 
Let me move these out of the way. Let's throw this here and let's throw this here, right? So the X-Men set here is sold out at a lot of places. It's gone from Hasbro Pro's Post, which originally had it for $59.99. Big Bad Store has it, Big Bad Toy Store, but it's a bit more expensive. And GameStop had this priced way high. I want to say at $66 or even more than that. However, they did have, again, they were running their special for 20 or 25% off. So I end up getting this set for about $60 even. That's with taxes that shipped for the big time Spider-Man. 25% off, I end up paying $15 for that figure. So the next figures that I want to show are figures that I really don't have a lot of in my collection. But as I'm steady buying stuff, that may change. And that's the Beast Kingdom or Egg Attack Beast Kingdom figures marvel dc whatever they possibly have so if you look at this set here this wolverine let me back the camera up just a little bit i paid 40 dollars for this set to me that is a phenomenal price i just couldn't pass it for 40 bucks i actually purchased this from amazon i do have amazon membership which costs about $100 for the year. However, any items that sold from Amazon do ship for free. I haven't even opened this figure as of yet. But this, I would say, is one of my better purchases in the year. It comes with this big Sentinel head. No idea if I'm going to review this. Nevertheless, a great value. And these figures sell, I think their price point is $80 bucks and up. Some reaching over $100. So I want to say I saved at least 50% on this figure. Sticking with Amazon, the Spider-Gwen. Not a figure that I was really intrigued to get. The price point lowered me in. I paid about $32 for Gwen with taxes shipped. And I couldn't pass on that. So this particular Wolverine figure here i've never seen it before it states that it's an exclusive and i actually didn't order this what i ordered was a cyclops again from amazon price was about 30 something bucks didn't receive the cyclops i received this guy i took a look into him saw that he was selling for around the price point of a hundred dollars or more so i decided to keep him i'm going to add this to my collection I saved about $120 from this figure, and I'll end up ordering that Cyclops at some other point. Just slide this back here. So now, going to the next set of figures. These are figures that I would have never added to my collection. I completely blame Robo at the Foosh. A channel that I watch regularly for these figures. I have five in total. It's one in the back. I was having a hard time finding these. Couldn't find them at Target. Don't think I could find them at Big Bad Toy Store. I did find them at Amazon. Amazon had them for their regular price point of $25. I ended up buying these at Best Buy. And I spent $17 each for these figures. That's including shipping. I also got this Dire Wolf. Which I may get a few more of those as well. So it's very important to make sure that you're just not looking at one site to purchase action figures. You have to check around. See who has sell. See who has deals before committing to purchases. So moving on from knowing where to search for action figures, I want to talk about something else that may be as equally important, and that's shipping. For any of you who collect hot toys, one of the places you may go to purchase those hot toys is Sideshow Collectibles, as I normally go. 
One of the things that I've never been a fan of when it came to Sideshow Collectible is the amount that they charge for shipping. For a standard one six figure, it is $21 to ship a figure. Granted, I am on the East Coast, they are on the West Coast, but I feel when it comes to a company that size, they should have better shipping rates to whatever, whatever carrier it is that they use. So if you thought the $21 was a lot, keep this in mind. Recently, their price has raised to, let's just say $25 for a standard one six figure. When I say standard one six figure, I'm talking about a Captain America. Now, if you're looking for larger figures such as Thanos, that may be $40 to ship. If you are looking the Hall of Armor, which I just ordered not too long ago, you're looking at probably $80 to ship that Hall of Armor. And if you're looking at something like the Ecto-1, over $200 to ship. I am certainly not a fan of those numbers. So what I find myself doing now is deciding if I want to order from Sideshow Collectibles. And recently I really haven't. So the reason that I ordered the Hall of Armor is two reasons. One, they were order offering free shipping. That saved me probably $80 alone. In addition to that, they took 10% off the sales price. That Hall of Armor sells for over $700. So $70 saved for the cost of the product and another $80 for shipping. I saved about $150. In addition to that, I believe, and I could be incorrect, I think taxes was added to the lesser price point. And if that was the case, I saved money as well. So over $150 on that particular item. That was a great buy. So now when it comes to shipping, what do you do? Do you spend the $100 a year for Amazon to have free shipping year round on any Amazon item that's sold on Amazon? And the reason I say it that way is because there are other vendors who can sell products on Amazon. So for some of those other vendors, you may have to cover the cost of shipping. Let me slide some of these back for a moment. I'm going to slide some stuff to the front. As you can see, I am a big Storm Collectibles fan. So if I'm ever doing reviews on their products and you think that I'm hating, I assure you I am not hating. I am just giving my honest opinion, but we're not here to talk about that today. So with some companies, you are able to do stockpiling. Meaning, you pay either one shipping point and you're able to add many items to your order. Some don't have a date to where you need to ship. Some may give you 30 days from the initial first purchase. Some may give a little bit longer. So for these figures, and this one here, I ordered them all from Big Bad Toy Store. Big Bad Toy Store has an option called Pile of Loot to where you can add all of these items and place them in a cart until you're ready to ship. For most of these, I purchased them at different times. I placed them in the cart. Some have been sitting for months. And finally, I decided to ship it for the beautiful price of $4. Now, what could have been better than $4, you ask, is it could have been free. But it wasn't, but who am I to argue to have all of these items shipped for $4? In addition, I was able to get Chung Li at a discount. I don't even remember the original price of this. Maybe it was $49, maybe it was $59. Whatever it was, I was able to get about 15% off, maybe 20% off. I think 20 on Chung Li. And with Kazuya, I waited too long to purchase him. I could have gotten him for a lot cheaper, but now as he's not available in a lot of places or they don't have a lot of quantity, the price is around normal for him. So I was able to get this from Big Bad Toy Store for about 15 off. He prices for about $70. And for this Mega Construct, 
I really purchased this for my son. I'm trying to put together his collection. Uh, he's still a toddler at the moment, but I bought the Mega Construct. Castle Grey Skull, excuse me, and a few other things to go with this. So there's to that. So let me shove some of these things back in order. So now that we've moved away from shipping, something else that is very important when it comes to action figure collecting is knowing when to buy an item. So I find that usually around holidays, holiday non-specific items are usually cheaper. They are discounted. And if you're able to wait till after the holidays, if that same figure is still available, it's usually cheaper. For example, if it's Halloween time, prior to Halloween, things are things Halloween related hold its price. After Halloween, it comes down. So with this Alex figure from Street Fighter V, I am not really a fan of Street Fighter V. This figure was priced at 100 bucks. Big, bulky guy. I was not going to pay $100 for him. Not because I felt that it wasn't worth it. I just really had no attachment to the character, nor did I have attachment to Street Fighter V. However, Amazon had this deeply discounted at 50% off. For $50, I couldn't pass on the engineering and the quality that Storm Collectibles buy, uh, provides, so I bought this particular figure. I know I'm showing a lot of Storm Collectibles. This is it. Again, knowing when to buy. Usually when I go to Comic Cons, Bluefin, Bluefin brands are usually discounted. Storm Collectibles fall underneath the Bluefin, Bluefin brands. Not sure why I'm struggling to say that. Bluefin brands. So with the cons, they're typically buy one figure regular price, get the other for half off. Doesn't appear that there will be any cons this year. So Bluefin was running a sale online. Buy one figure, get the other figure half off. So both of these figures had a price point of $90, I believe. It's $90 or $95. So for one, I paid regular price, which was $90. Bucks. The other, I got it for half, which was $45, plus $6 shipping. I felt that was still a good sell, so I purchased these two figures. I am having some survivor's remorse with Bane. Wasn't sure that I really wanted this figure anyway. Uh, I purchased him because I was trying to match this price point, but I kind of wish I would have went with the other character from uh, King of Fighters, which is slipping my name at the time. Let me slide these to the side. move a few of these figures to the front okay so two of these figures are from the same wave so when these figures first came out they were priced at $19.99 at most places I kind of wanted Spider-Woman I already have a version of her didn't want to spend $20 I definitely wanted Hydro-Man but the only place that I could find him was GameStop, and he was 23, so I didn't want to pay that price point. So I waited. And as with a lot of Marvel Legends, once you wait till that wave hits the store for over a month, the figures are deeply discounted. So I ended up paying, I think, $11 each for these two figures, nearly 50% off of them. Now, to where you may run into trouble... There are certain items to where you cannot wait for them to be discounted. If you wait for them to be discounted, you may find yourself in a position to where you're paying double the price for them, such as the Marvel Legends Apocalypse Wave Psylocke. That figure flew off shelves very quickly. Maybe in your targets, you have one of those rare situations to where she just sat around on the pegs. For me, in my local stores, even online, she sold out very quickly. I was able to grab her for retail because when it comes to X-Men Marvel Legend figures, I usually don't wait. 
with the exception of certain characters. So quickly, Psylocke sold out. Her prices started to rise by 20%, 50%, double. And I think right now she's sitting on eBay for about three times the original price. For Weapon X figure, I really didn't want this figure either. I did need the lag to Caliban. Caliban, I looked online, people were charging $10 for the leg alone, so I waited and I was able to get the leg as well as the figure for about $11. And I purchased these three figures, either Walmart or Amazon, maybe a combination of the both. And this figure wasn't deeply discounted. I wanted the She-Hulk. I wanted Doctor Doom, which I had, and Thing really wasn't interested in the other characters. I was hoping that she went much cheaper, but I just I saw She-Hulk holding value. So I ended up pulling the trigger at about $17. So what's that? Maybe 10, 15% off the original price. Hey, I'll take it. And since I'm on this part of it, one of the reasons I don't review Marvel Legends is I no longer really collect the entire wave. And I know for someone who may be watching my channel, it's like, hey, when is the next character coming up? How does the build a figure look? And I don't have all the characters to put together nor the build a figure, so I really don't review the Legends. But what I plan to do sometime soon, I have a lot of plans for videos and, and they just don't make it is to show like some of my stuff like x-men for example all of the x-men stuff that i have packaged open them and possibly do a quick review on those figures so the last thing that i want to talk about i think this is the last thing at least is knowing the condition to buy your figures new or used and i assure you there are variations for both so let's start with new so when it comes to a new figure, when I say new, what I mean is brand new, in box, hasn't been opened, still currently sealed, usually buying from the company, but it could be an individual as well. However, when it comes to new, there are different nuances. For example, some people still say that figures are new if the box is open the figure has been taken out, but it's never been played with. It's never been displayed. I don't agree with that. New could be the box terribly damaged. This box isn't terribly damaged, but it is some damage here, which some collectors wouldn't buy this figure just because of the box. I'm not one of those collectors. And then you have use. There are variations to use. Use could be taken out of the box and put back in, never played with, never displayed. Use could be played with, displayed, put back in the box. Use could be minor imperfection, things that are missing. And all of the things that I've listed can save you anywhere from 10 to 50% on items. I see some items without boxes sell for 50% under than what they would if the box were included or a figure that has certain things missing that's discounted at 25% off. Now, depending on what's missing, I still may buy a figure. If it's items such as additional hands, I may be fine with the hands that it already has on it. And if it's a, a line that I already collect, then maybe I already have hands from another character that I can use in its place. When it comes to stuff like head scopes, now that's where I may draw the line on buying a figure without the additional head scope. If it's a hot toy, which really does not come with additional head scopes, I may not purchase it. If it's a storm collectible figure, which comes with three to four head scopes, and it's really one that I'm not fond of, then I may purchase that item. Take a builder figure, for example. What happens if you don't want the entire wave, but you want do want the build a figure character? If you can find the pieces cheap enough, or if you can find someone who doesn't like the build a figure, but wants all the other characters, buying it used, this is selling, this Sasquatch sells for about 40 bucks. 
compared to the six or seven characters needed to build him, that's anywhere from $120 to $140. So at the top price point, you're saving yourself at least $100. Okay, and last but not least... It's knowing when to pull the trigger. So I could not find this Target exclusive at any of my Targets. I even drove to different boroughs, still couldn't find it. I was paying for tolls, spending gas. Finally, I said hell with it. I went to eBay and I purchased this figure on eBay. I may have paid $58 for it. This figure prices at $29. You throw in taxes about $30. Let's just say $35. So I paid an additional $25 for it, nearly double. Some people are not willing to do it. This is a figure that I think once it's no longer available, it's going to go up probably by three times the price. In addition... I was searching for it, but I couldn't find it. So I ended up buying it from eBay. And at the time, I purchased it for one of the cheaper prices. That No, actually, I didn't. It was someone who was selling theirs, I think, for $52 shipped. And I was like, hey, let me wait and see if I can find it cheaper. And I was unable to find it cheaper. So items such as store exclusives, that is a very difficult market because you're not going to find it outside of that store unless you're going to places like eBay or social media or other outlets that sell figures secondhand. And that can become very expensive. So thank you for sticking around. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this video helps some collectors, especially new collectors. In addition, I hope that all of this content shows you that I am still collecting. I'm just not finding time to shoot videos.